Now let's look at this uh, example of uh, a time series and actually is considering the time series model which is defined by this. So this is an AR1 process. ET is sequence of independent normally distributed random variables with mean 0, variance sigma squared. So ET is normally uh, distributed with mean 0, variance sigma squared. The series begins when x0 equal to 0 which means this is a known value so the probability of x0 is uh, is a known value so the probability is 1. Show that the conditional distribution of xt given xt minus 1. So xt given xt minus 1 I have to show that it is normal okay we have we know that xt minus alpha xt minus 1 equal to et and we et we have already said that it is normal with 0 to sigma squared. Now from here I can very well put up given xt minus 1 some value for xt minus 1 I can know that the expected value of xt is nothing but expected value of alpha xt minus 1 plus expected value of et which would uh, become alpha xt minus if I am talking of the expected value of xt given xt minus 1 it becomes alpha xt minus 1 plus 0 which is alpha xt minus 1 which means the xt given xt minus 1 will follow a normal distribution with a mean alpha xt minus 1 then the variance does not change it is the same sigma squared okay so the conditional distribution of xt given xt minus 1 is normal and hence show the likelihood of making the observations from this model okay now if i have to uh, consider the likelihood okay if uh, if i am uh, looking at the likelihood Okay, probability of uh, x0, probability of uh, x equal to x1, divide, given x0, multiplied by probability of uh, x equal to x2, given x1, I have to go this way, which means probability of x0, first of all, 1, times, I can generalize this as, the, uh, the uh, now when I am looking at the likelihood I am generalizing it uh, from i equal to 1 to n probability of x i equal to x i plus uh, x i given x i minus 1 right so uh, uh, x i given x i minus 1 so uh, this is the multiplication that I am trying to do and I know that this is a, a normal distributed. So 1 by root 2 pi sigma squared times e to the power of xi mi minus half xi minus mu alpha xt minus 1 by sigma squared. So this becomes the density function and uh, this has to be on a multiplication from 1 to n. Now, if that's the case, the simplification, the likelihood function is coming out to be proportional to sigma to the power minus n. And all this integration is typically happening e to the power of minus 1 by 2 sigma squared. And here I can look at it as a summation from i equal to 1 to n xi minus alpha xi minus 1 whole square. So this is becoming uh, the likelihood function and uh, it's as good as saying if I have to maximize this is as good as minimize this particular value. In that case this is regarded even as a least squares estimate also. Now Using the maximum, now I want to go with the log likelihood function which will uh, give me minus n log sigma minus 1 by 2 sigma squared summation 
xi minus alpha xi minus 1 whole square. And this should be equal to, the, this is the log likelihood. And I derivate, take the derivative of the log likelihood with respect uh, to, let's say, alpha. And I can equate it to 0. So in that case, this is not going to come. It is minus 1 by 2 sigma squared into 2 times minus xi minus 1 times sigma xi minus alpha xi minus 1. This is equal to 0. So it is uh, coming out for me as 1 by sigma squared, right, if I am uh, looking at 1 by sigma squared, if I take this inside, it is nothing but xi xi minus 1 minus alpha xi minus 1 squared. This is what is coming out. So, which means this entire thing, if I am setting it uh, equal to 0, I am getting sigma xi xi minus 1 is equal to alpha times sigma xi minus 1 squared. So, alpha is coming out as sigma xi xi minus 1 divided by sigma xi minus 1 squared. So, this is the value of uh, alpha that is coming up. Right in this expression, the whole uh, scenario of alpha is working out to this much. Similarly, I can differentiate this particular log likelihood function with respect to lambda uh, sigma. So, minus n by sigma, right, and uh, this is minus half sigma xi minus alpha xi minus 1 squared. And 1 by sigma squared, if I have to uh, take 1 by sigma squared, it is nothing but minus 2 by sigma cube, the derivative of that. So, even this is going off, telling me n by sigma, right, if I am uh, putting minus n by sigma plus sigma xi minus alpha xi minus 1 squared by sigma cube is equal to 0. So, from here I can simplify it. 1 sigma I can take out and it uh, becomes sigma squared for me is directly uh, coming out as 1 by n times sigma xi minus alpha xi minus 1 squared. So, this is how we are getting the estimate for sigma squared as well as alpha from this maximum likelihood estimate. Then we are talking of derive the Yule-Walker equations for the model. Okay, I know that uh, xt is this much. So, I can take the covariance of xt comma xt right, which uh, gives me gamma 0 here is equal to alpha gamma 1 plus sigma squared. Similarly, when I do covariance between xt minus 1 comma xt, okay, this becomes gamma 1 and alpha times this becomes gamma 0 and this is 0. So, from here I am getting this alpha 1, gamma 1 is alpha times gamma 0. So, the same logic if I put here gamma 0 equal to alpha times gamma 1, alpha gamma 0 plus sigma squared. So, gamma 0 equal to alpha squared gamma 0 plus sigma squared. Gamma 0 into 1 minus alpha squared is equal to sigma squared. Right. So, based on this, derive the estimates of alpha and sigma squared. Now, here I know that these are the numbers and probably I know alpha is nothing but gamma 1 by gamma 0 which is nothing but rho 1, autocorrelation 1. So, alpha squared is coming out to be that much which means uh, gamma 0 times 1 minus of rho 1 squared is going to be my sigma squared. 
right? So sigma squared is uh, coming out to be that much, and this is a uh, uh, alpha, alpha value. And comment on the difference between the estimates of alpha. Here I am getting my alpha directly as gamma one by gamma zero. And uh, in the other one I have uh, earlier, here I have got it uh, as sigma xi xi minus 1 by sigma xi minus 1 squared. So, I mean, gamma 1 is nothing but uh, the covariance. So, it is nothing but xi minus. Uh, so, probably when I am doing gamma 1, it is nothing but sigma i equal to 1 to n xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar or here it is xi minus 1 xi minus 1 minus uh, x bar and similarly in the denominator gamma 0 is nothing but xi minus x bar squared now if you look at it if x bar is very very small Right, if x bar, this is working out to be the same as the previous expression that we have got. Right, so if the value of x bar is coming out to be very, very small, it is working out to sigma xi xi minus 1 divided by sigma xi minus 1 whole squared itself. 